Now in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the temporal lobe. So the temporal lobe, if we have a look at its boundaries again, first of all, superiorly its boundary is the, uh, the lateral fissure, also known as, or the lateral sulcus, also known as the sylvanian fissure. And its posterior boundary is actually an imaginary or arbitrary area that separates the temporal lobe from the occipital lobe. So this area here is actually the temporal lobe. There's a couple of important gyri that you need to be aware of. There's three important gyrus. The superior gyrus, the medial or middle gyrus, and the inferior gyrus here. Let's look at the superior gyrus and let's look at the most posterior end of the superior gyrus. And in actual fact, let's say we were to pull away, let's say we were to pull into the uh, lateral fissure and pull it out at the posterior end of the temporal lobe, you've got gyri here that fold in and behind. So these gyri here are called the transverse gyri. And like I said, they sort of fold in and behind. And that's called the transverse. gyrus and the transverse gyrus is also known as Heschel's gyrus. Now why am I telling you about Heschel's gyrus? Oh, if I can spell gyrus. Because Heschel's gyrus, again Heschel's gyrus is located if you take the temporal lobe, the superior and posterior aspect and it folds in behind part of the transverse gyrus. Heschel's gyrus is the primary auditory cortex. Very important. Primary auditory cortex. That means, I'll highlight it here, that means that when sound comes in and goes to our brain, in order for us to be consciously aware of the sound or that noise, that's because of this primary auditory cortex which is located at Heschel's gyrus. What that means is when we hear this sound, it simply is us hearing a noise. It's not our comprehension of what that noise means. Think about language. Language is obviously a bunch of sound, well, at least auditory language is a bunch of sounds, but they have meaning to them. Certain sounds have meaning and that meaning can only make sense once we associate that sound with previous experience, right? Which means that the primary auditory cortex doesn't do that. It simply takes the sound in and all we know is that we have heard a sound. That's it. Which means we now need to identify where the association cortices are. So when it comes to associ uh, association, uh, auditory association cortex, it's located near that Heschel's gyrus. It's actually located around here. Again, if we take this superior gyrus and go to the posterior end of it, this area is known as Wernicke's area. And I've spoken about Wernicke's area in a previous lecture. Wernicke's area which is the association cortex for sound. So the auditory association cortex. So again, when you hear a sound, it goes to the primary auditory cortex and you just hear the sound. When that sound makes sense to you, it's because it's gone to the association cortex, which is Wernicke's area, which means that damage to Wernicke's area means that you may present with issues in comprehension of speech and language. That's very important. So damage to Wernicke's area can uh, result in issues with comprehending language and speech. That's pretty much all I want to show you when it comes to the temporal lobe. Now, temporal lobe also plays a role in vision and understanding vision. Predominantly, the vision comes in the occipital lobe, but the parietal and temporal lobe play a role in the association of visual input. So again, making sense of what you see, but I predominantly wanted to focus on the role of the temporal lobe 
for firstly hearing sound and speech and secondly understanding sound and speech.